Hello and welcome to the Battle Line Podcast, where we have conversations on that collision of space between community, faith, and culture. I'm one of your hosts, Matt Satterley, coming to you live from Camp Hoblet Zell in Texas. And here with me is the Director of Publications, my co-host on this podcast, and my co-host in life, Major Jamie Satterley. Jamie, how are you doing today? Oh, you know, it's a fantastic day in the neighborhood, whatever it is Mr. Rogers says. <laughs> we also beautiful have with day. us here. Day, that's what it is. <laughs> we also have with us here our co-host, our producer, our media manager, the one who makes this whole thing run. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, how are you doing today being back in Virginia? Last time we talked, you were in Rhode Island. Greetings. Um, you know, I'm feeling the local fire. The heat is a bit humid here. But otherwise, I'm totally jazzed. Great. Well, today we wanted to talk to you about, speaking of the heat, um, we just wanted to do a quick episode. This will not be a very long one because right now we are in the middle of the National Seminar on Evangelism. It is a National Salvation Army event that is taking place right now at Camp Hoblitzell in Midlothian, Texas, in the Texas Division of the Southern Territory. Um, of the Salvation Army here. And so we just wanted to take a quick uh, few minutes just to make sure everybody knew what was going on and to tell you all the incredible things that are happening here and what the Lord is doing. And um, just to see if uh, there were any questions and we could stir up some interest to attend next year's National Seminar on Evangelism, though next year will be the National Seminar on Holiness. Yeah, so, so last oh, go ahead. year... I was say, last year, um, I, I've never been able to attend the National Seminar on Evangelism. Last year was the National Seminar on Holiness. It was their first year, so I was able to attend that one. Um, and it, it was a really um, impactful conference, I think. And I've heard so many things throughout the year. I know people who have gone to this seminar um, and have their lives have just uh, been changed by the things that they learned there. And so... I think it's a really exciting um, and interesting ministry that the Army does. So I'm excited to hear about your experience there. I get to come out later in the week and do a presentation on evangelism through publications. So I'm excited about that. Um, but it's I'm excited to hear about what you have to share with us today. Yeah, as our listeners are, li- as you are listening to this podcast right now, um, the National Seminar on Evangelism is wrapping up. But as we're recording, we are smack dab in the middle of the hustle and bustle of it all. So the National Seminar on Evangelism got started this year, this Saturday here. And we started off with a keynote session by Commissioner Kenneth G. Hodder, the national commander, spoke to us about the imperatives of heaven and hell that we sometimes forget about hell in our conversations about evangelism, that it is a literal place and that it is something that is important for us to be talking about. He also talked to us about the doctrines of the Salvation Army and how they are important. These truths that rise up, these like islands of truth that rise up in an island. uh, I mean, sorry, these islands of truth that, that rise up in the ocean of culture and how we build our lives. We, we find our place in the truth of these doctrines. And so he also spoke with us on Sunday morning. Um, we had our worship service and we took um, photos of each territory and a big delegate picture, which will be uh, appearing probably in a war cry magazine coming towards your way soon. And then we also wrapped up Sunday with the messages from Captain Durrell Houston. Captain Durrell Houston is the Divisional Youth Secretary of the Swanecki Division of the Eastern Territory, and he crushed it. I'm going to say, what's my little side sermon right now? If you are looking for a speaker, the Savage Army speaker, you'll want to get in touch with Captain Durrell Houston, uh, DYS of Swanecki. He, uh, as the youth would say, he crushed it. Yeah, I've not heard him speak before. I've met him briefly, um, but I hear great things. I've heard great things about um, the way that he relates with people when he speaks. So um, I'm sorry I missed it. Yeah. So and then yesterday we had Gre- uh, Greg Steer. Um, he, you've heard him on the podcast before. If you want to know more about Greg, he wrote his book, Unlikely Fighter. Go back a few, go back into our archives a few episodes ago, and you can hear our interview with Greg Steer, the founder of Dare to Share 
uh, a, a organization that wants every teen in the world to hear the gospel from a friend. And he trained the delegates here at the National Seminar of Evangelism. We have about, depending on which territory you're from, about 10 to 20 delegates from each of the four U.S. territories gathered here. And Greg Steer trained us in how to have those gospel conversations. He used the phrase, awkward is awesome. Because I think that's a lot of way we feel about evangelism is we say, I don't want to be awkward. I don't want to get uncomfortable. But as Greg was telling us, awesome things happen in the awkward moments. Great things, life-changing decisions are made in those uncomfortable places in life, those uncomfortable times. And so he trained us in how to have those gospel conversations. Again, he led us to everything we've talked about in that one podcast episode. If you get a chance, uh, go to dare, the number two, share, dare2share.org. You can see all of the resources that they have available there that are made available completely free. So any core, anybody listening to this, you can go to dare, the number two, share.org um, and get all of those resources, those curriculums, those events that they have that are absolutely free. And then also the Life in Six Words app. So that, that app is free for download at any app store. Life in Six Words um, is a great app that Dare to Share has put out to um, help people along the way in um, having those gospel conversations. He talked about the cause circle, right? The three things. And he said, these are the three things that the Salvation Army does so good. Number one was prayer, praying for people to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And not just like, you know, those prayers that we do right after dinner, but intercessory on our knees prayer for the people that are lost in our communities and our families and our friends and our workplaces all around us. And then the second thing was uh, care. And we do that by what the Salvation Army does through our social services, through giving food boxes and um, having a place for kids to go after school and helping people be able to stay in their homes and through our thrift stores. We, we care for people. And then lastly, sharing for them as well. And the great thing that Greg did was he had every delegate write the name of an unsaved person that they know in the middle of their cause circle so that they could be praying for that person. Yeah, I love uh, the the material that comes out of Dare to Share. There's so many great resources available there. Um, so like Matt said, I would encourage you to go and check it out. Um, they, they've they taken so much of that work on themselves. Um, and so all you have to do is kind of plug it in to your context, uh, make some adjustments. Um, but it's all right there free. They're happy to make it available to you. Um, uh, and so, yeah, and the it's a great app. Life in Six Words. Then today we had Steve Carter. Um, Steve Carter is an author, uh, preacher, and um, I think he's known in most Southern, he's no, he's most in known, I'm sorry, excuse me, he is known in most of the U.S. territories that he has uh, spoke, spoken at Salvation Army events before. He is here with us for the next three days, and now you've been brought up to where we are uh, in the middle of the week. So what's going to happen now when uh, in between the recording of this and when this episode is released is we are going to sit under the teaching of Steve Carter for today and tomorrow. But what we're excited about is that tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, all of the delegates here at the National Seminar on Evangelism, all from all four U.S. territories, are going to be divided up. They already are divided up into small groups. And those small groups are going to go out into the communities tomorrow and do practical service and evangelism. Now, th this isn't going to just be cold call, knocking on doors, people opening the door and saying, you know, hitting people over the head with the gospel and saying, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? These delegates are going to be ministering with a local core in the Dallas-Fort Worth area command. So there are nine core that have got events planned for tomorrow. And so even though the core are going to be running these events, these National Seminar on Evangelism delegates are going to be uh, partnering with the local core. Because, you know, when there is evangelism, there needs to be follow up. There needs to be discipleship. And so by tying people back into their local core that is what Jesus asked us to do. He asked us in the Great Commission to not just go and tell people about him, but to go and 
make disciples. And so that's what that's what we're hoping comes out tomorrow. I wish I could talk more about that, but as of right now, it's kind of weird. It's like a time travel thing. By the time our listeners are hearing this, we will have done it. But by the time we're recording it, it has not been done yet. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes, by the time our good listeners hear this, I will be there and we'll be giving uh, the pub's presentation. Um, so I'm excited about that excited to be there and to, to be able to represent publications and the evangelistic work that we do, um, making those opportunities available to our soldiers who may not realize, um, hey, this is just yet another avenue I have to share the gospel is through these gifts. I think yes. sometimes we think I was gonna say, evangelism. Speak, can, you, can you speak to that to us, please, Major Jamie? How the war cry, how peer, how these things, how crest books, which some people might not know about, they are evangelistic publications. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our mission in publications with every publication is to make Jesus known. Um, and then by uh, by making Jesus known to um, inspire people to be discipled and to grow to be more like Him, and then to you know to serve um, in their communities and, and all those things. In addition to telling the story of the Salvation Army, so um, you know with with the war cry and with peer, it's all about um, you know just trying to help people understand Jesus as their Lord and Savior, helping them to grow in faith, um, and in knowledge of him. Uh, and so there's opportunities for people to write. Both websites have submission information. So if you're a writer, um, and would love to, um, to submit an article on the war cry, uh, there are a list of like suggested topics of things that, um, typically we accept and, you know, um, so that it's not just, you know, there are some things like we we probably aren't going to feature an article on, um, you know, like getting rid of athlete's foot or something like that. That's just not really <laughs> our lane. Um, so there's a list of topics there that might just help you if you're somebody who needs a writing prompt to get started. Um, but both the warcry.org and peermag.org have um, a space where you can submit um, articles for um for publishing. And then with Crest Books, it's the same thing now. Crest Books, we're, we are uh, in the midst of trying to um, reimagine a little bit what Crest Books could be. And we really want to get soldiery involved, um, and not just soldiers, but also our professional employees and all these kind of things um, involved in Crest Books. Um, Crest Books publishes three books a year and uh, from a variety of topics. A lot of them are devotional. Sometimes they're history. Sometimes they have to do with, um, you know, like leadership or something like that. So um, certainly, especially in the devotional realm, those um, are also there to, to kind of help people grow in their faith or to be introduced to faith. And then our fourth publication, Word and Deed, is a theological journal. Um, and so obviously, you know, with that, it's again, helping people to kind of really wrestle through some theological topics, um, and to kind of, um, deepen their faith in that way. And all of those, every single one of those publications takes submissions from authors. So, um, you know, if you always had a book in mind and you would like to write a book, there's a proposal. You just send me an email and I can send you a proposal and the Literary Council will discuss that proposal and get back to you. Um, with Word and Deed, our editors are um, Drs. Green and Dr. Raymond, and uh, you can submit theological articles to them for Word and Deed. And then again, check out our, our website for submission information for the monthly magazines. Thank you, Major. So, yes, to finish out. Um, I, again, I'm going to be doing this weird back to the future, speaking in past tense about things that have not happened yet. Um, on Thursday, the delegates are, went on a tour to, uh, well, we, we had, again, another uh, time from Steve Carter, but also we try to mix in a little bit of fun at the National Seminar on Evangelism. And we are trying, we have been doing things in the Dallas area. So some of the delegates are going to Waco to see the Dr. Pepper Museum. And also there's this uh, thing down there called the Magnolia Silos. I believe I'm saying that correctly, Major Jamie. This is the uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines shops. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's called the Silo. The Thank Silos. You. 
So but nothing magnolia. magnolia. If you just say magnolia, people know what you're talking about. Okay, 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 okay. And then another bus went to uh, the Fort Worth stockyards to get the full Texas experience of the history of the livestock trade and um, all the shops and restaurants and just they uh, do a cattle drive through the middle of town um, with real – uh, livestock, uh, real longhorns that come down the street. And then one bus also went to uh, what we've been calling the presidential tour. Um, they went to the sixth floor museum overlooking Daly Plaza. That is, of course, the museum um, that um, uh, uh, talks about all the things that happened with the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And then they finished up with a tour of the presidential, the George W. Bush uh, presidential library. And then one tour that was very excited about is, as most people know, and hopefully maybe they know, maybe they don't know, The Chosen, the biblical TV show, the biblical app that has the show. I think everybody, just Google The Chosen, you can find it, is actually filmed on location here on Camp Hoblitzell property. It is very cool to be sitting right here at the National Seminar Evangelism and look across the Camp Lake and see Capernaum. They have built the city of Capernaum over there um, and the temple. There's a little Jerusalem temple across the lake as well. So it's very cool. So they, uh, our delegates got a tour of, of the chosen set for those who elected to do that as well. And then on Friday, the day that this episode is, dry, is, is, is dropping live, um, if you're hearing this and it is Friday, the 12th. Please be uh, praying for our last day of National Seminar on Evangelism. Major Cheryl Kiston, the Corps Officer at Tustin Ranch, California, is here with us, and she is um, giving us our final teaching throughout that day um, and then uh, leading us in the covenant service tonight. And then all the delegates will return home on Saturday the 13th. And the idea of the National Seminar on Evangelism is for our delegates to be inspired, to be led by the Spirit, to care about evangelism, and then to go home and to teach those things at their own core. Not just to come to a nice week in Texas, in the Texas heat, and just enjoy a fellowship time. That's great, and it, that's, what it, that's what we enjoy doing, but there is a practical application to this as well. We do something with what we've, what we've learned here. So uh, as we get ready to close this up, again, it's a short episode because we are about to run right. I'm about to leave here as soon as we say the last amen and run right back into um, the next meeting. So this is why we have a quick episode today. But I would gr greatly express that if anybody wants to do this in 2023, that they go ahead and begin to have conversations with their core officer and their divisional secretaries for program, their territorial secretaries for program, because the next one will be the national, it will be the second ever national seminar on holiness. Now, there we have evangelism and holiness, and they're running in, um, every other year, right? So this year we had evangelism. Next year it's the national seminar on holiness, and that will take place at Glen Erie in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So um, delegates, if you are interested in that, it doesn't matter how old you are. You need to be over the age of 18 at least. But um, soldiers of the Salvation Army of the United States, you'll want to speak to your officer and say, hey, I want to go to the uh, National Seminar on Holiness in uh, Glen Erie in 2023. All right. Time for our last question uh, of each episode. And that is, what is bringing you joy? Elizabeth, what's bringing you joy today? Okay, so last time we chatted, Charlie Puth and June Cook had just come out with their fab collab. But since then, BTS has partnered with my favorite hip hop artist, Snoop Dogg, for another summer smash. I haven't heard <laughs> it. You haven't heard about it? Oh my gosh, it's called Bad Decisions, which I do not recommend you making. But it's <laughs> <laughs> it's with Benny Blanco. Um I don't really know what he does on the song, but he is there as well. <laughs> I love those when you're like, it's like featuring, and you're like, hey, where are they featured? Well, uh, I think I, I think maybe he's a producer, and so he, you know, he's just there yeah. for fun. But yeah, check out the track; it's bopping. 
Nice. <laughs> All right, Matt, what about you? I can guess, but go ahead and tell us. <laughs> uh, I think where I am right now is giving me a lot of joy. I think one of the best things to see is the worship here has been phenomenal and the teaching has been phenomenal. And something that's giving me joy is I appreciate being able in the meetings to look over at all the delegates and watch them scribble fur- furiously as they're trying to take down all these notes from the people that are teaching just about these things for um, on evangelism. That's just to see, you know, we've been planning this event for the past year. So to see it happening now, doing, finally getting to do it and seeing people take notes, knowing that that stuff's going to go back home. I have firmly believe, and I have firmly stated many, many times, I believe that there will be people that will get a relationship, have a relationship with Jesus and be in heaven because of what is taking place at the National Seminar on Evangelism here right now. Major Jamie, what's what land the plane for us? What's what's bringing you joy? Okay. Well, here's the thing. The other day, um, I walked into World Market um, and I was going to get um, some sir- like coffee syrup. That's what I was going in there for. But when I walked in, as soon as you get in the front door, there's this huge display of fall things. Um, including, wow, yeah, including um, the coffee syrup and coffee. Um, I mean, there it's two different kinds of syrup. One's like a simple syrup and one's like, you know, the kind you squeeze on your ice cream. But um, both of them in pumpkin pie flavor. Nice. So, of course, even though it's August, I bought them because I figured (laughs) by the time um, I would get back there, it would already be after September 1st, which is, you know, Starbucks has taught us that September 1st is PSL season, the kickoff. Are you serious? I completely forget that. Yeah. So even though it's still, you know, hot as I'll get out here in the south on September 1st, uh, you know. Time for the pumpkins, I guess. Also, randomly, I don't know what Krispy Kreme is thinking, but they rolled out their pumpkins, pumpkin donuts today. Oh, wow. And it said August 8th through August 28th. Why are we only eating pumpkins in August? I don't know, Krispy Kreme. I don't know what's <laughs> happening there, but Krispy Kreme's God's donuts, so we're just going to let them do their thing. <laughs> Not be mad about it. All right. Well, again, everybody, we're so grateful for you jumping in with us. I know this is a a half episode, but that's because we are doing the work right now, trying to get the word out about Jesus and learn all that we can to do that more effectively. That's going to end this episode of the Battle Line Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the Battle Line wherever you listen to podcasts and check out the Peer website at peermag.org. Or also follow Peer on the socials at peer.magazine, an evangelistic magazine for Gen Z. Don't forget about the war cry as well. Until next time, this has been the Battle Line Podcast. Bye, everybody. See you later.